Okay, sit yourself on your lift. So just get yourself ready for your practice. Sit on your lift and then just come into cross legs. Have a little wriggle about just make sure that you feel like you're sitting evenly underneath the seat bones and then just hold on to your knees and then elevate the chest upwards drive the front chest upwards so just that feeling of lifting in the front chest feels Liberating to start off with. So elevate the chest. It feels liberating and it's a nice action for first thing in the morning because it frees your energy. Draw your shoulders consciously away from your ears. And then look down at the floor, look at something that's not moving. Softening your jaw, softening your tongue and your throat. Observing that as you soften your tongue, you soften around the forehead and around the eyes. Take deep inhalations in through the nose out through the nose, filling the lungs from the bottom to the top. Breathing evenly into both lungs and evenly out of both lungs. Just feel that as you fill the lungs, you draw energy into the physical body. So as long as there are no blood pressure conditions, then at the top of the in-breath, just hold the breath very briefly so that you allow the oxygen within the lungs to percolate through to the blood that surrounds the lungs a little more deeply. Just holding for just a very short time, a second or two each time, and then just normal out breaths. So that you absorb more of the oxygen within the breath. Release your hands, bring your hands into Namaste. Lengthen from the armpits into the elbows and then close your eyes. Continue to focus on the breath, focusing on inhalations, just to wake the body up. And then with an exhalation, draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment 
to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere. So hold on to that feeling of abundance in the heart area and then release the backs of your hands down toward your knees palms facing upwards and as you raise your head allow your eyes to softly open the focus to softly come back just hold on to your knees lift up into the chest drive the chest up towards the ceiling take a deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the right side, drawing your abdomen across, your ribs, your shoulders across. Using the out breath to intensify the Turn in action of the abdomen and the ribs and the shoulders. And then come back to centre, hold onto your knees, lift up into the chest, drive the spine upwards, take a deep inhalation. And then turn to the left. Drawing the breath in through the nose, using the out breath to turn. So allow the in breath to be effortless and non resistant. And then come back to the center just sit back in the middle just observe the energy of the spine of the arms and then just lift off your from your seat bones and then come on to all fours so have your little fingers on the edge of the mat spread your palms really deeply have your Feet as wide apart as the mat, just step back a little and then bring yourself up into dog down. So have your knees bent to start off with. Just feel where your body is in 360, 360 degrees, three dimensions. Just feel where there is resistance, feel where there is dullness, feel where there is attention. So draw yourself to where the body is attentive. And then try and mirror that attention, that activation on the other side. So if it's on one leg, try and mirror it with the other leg. Try and get even extension so spend some time in the pose trying to find that even action so keeping the legs nice and straight tuck in the um put pressing the kneecaps through to the backs of the knees soften the jaw and the tongue and focus on the breath but focus on the activation even activation on both sides of the body 
even activation between the legs and the arms and the torso. So using this pose to initiate the body into the practice. And then step your feet forwards, come up into a standing position. And then have some blocks for your hands for half Uttanasana. And then bring your feet as wide apart as your mat, turning the toes inward so that the outside edge of your feet line up with the outside edge of your mat. Just make sure that the feet are evenly placed. Spread the toes. Tighten the kneecaps, activate the thighs, and just observe whether your legs are working evenly. Is there one leg that's working more willingly than the other? So if there probably is, so spend a little time just observing how the legs are working. Observe the feet. So observe how maybe one foot is heavier on the toes, one foot is heavier on the heels. Can you even out that action? Can you tadasanaize the legs? Have your hands on your hips and lift up into the chest. Hinge at the hips. Keep the back straight, hinging at the hips, and then reach down and find the blocks underneath your hands. So just breathe evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath, tightening the kneecaps, turning the fronts of the thighs in so the backs of the thighs can turn out, lifting the backs of the thighs up to the seat bones, projecting the chin and the chest forwards. And then reach down a little lower if you can. If you've got a problem with your back, just stay at that first stage. If you can, just come down a little lower, reactivate the legs, finding that evenness in the legs. Extending the spine deeply away from the hips. If you can reach down and find the floor without bending your knees or rounding your back, then do. Maintain that evenness of the action of the legs. Observe the feeling of the legs. Observe the feeling underneath the feet, hitting the shins back so that your weight is in your heels. Lifting the seat bones away from the heels and the backs of the thighs and projecting the chin and the chest forwards. If you can, you can bend your elbows out to the side. Just be very cautious of doing this if you've got back problems and then reach around the backs of the heels. So just stay whichever level your back will accommodate. So rather than trying to just drag the legs through the gap between the drag the head between the gap between the two legs, can you continue to hinge at the hips and lengthen the chest down to the floor? Hinging at the hips, drawing the chest through the gap between the legs. And then release, come back into half Uttanasana. 
just reset the legs and then walk your hands towards the end of your mat and then come back into dog down Adam Mukha Svanasana. Have your hands shoulder width apart, feet hip width apart. Again, go for that evenness of action. And then just step your feet forwards, come up into a standing position. And then just come into Tadasana. So be in Tadasana, lift up into the chest, drive the chest upwards. Just feel that the legs are working evenly. Feel that both sides of the trunk are extending evenly. Feel that the shoulders are lengthening away from your ears down into the fingertips. Bring your arms out nice and wide. Bring the hands into the chest and then step or jump your feet nice and wide. Turn your left toes in and your right leg and foot all the way out and then straighten the leg straighten the legs and then you draw the chest to face the front turn this thigh turn this thigh so that the little toe side of the foot becomes planted heavily on the floor lift up into the chest keep your left hand on your hip and then reach over and find the shin and then continue to turn that left shoulder towards the back of the room just look down as your head over your foot and then really turn the abdomen turn the chest up to face the ceiling and then look up just feel that the legs are working evenly so is all your weight collapsing into that right leg or are you activating that left leg to distribute the weight evenly between the two feet? Is both, what about both sides of the trunk, are they extending evenly? Or is the right side of the trunk shrinking and the left side longer? Just try and work evenly into both sides of the trunk. And then come back to the center. Swap the feet around, turn the right toes in and the left leg and foot all the way out. Again, turn the legs so that they rotate outwards so the little toe side of the foot makes contact with the floor just have your right hand on your hip and then reach over with the left and then find the shin turn this top shoulder towards the back back of the room turn the abdomen towards the back of the room uh, up towards the ceiling chest up towards the ceiling and then reach up Again, observing the action of your legs. Just breathing evenly, just as we're working the legs evenly, trying to breathe evenly into both lungs. 
evenly activating the side ribs, the trunk of the chest, just evenly extending that left side. So this is as long as the right side. Lifting from the feet up into the hips, from the hips up into the chest, into the neck, into the head. And then reach up, come back to the centre, bring the feet parallel, and then step or jump the feet back together. And then just come back into Tadasana. So just breathe in evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. So maybe have a couple of blocks where you can reach them on the right side of your mat. And then just come back into Tadasana. Activating the kneecaps, turning the thighs inwards, tucking the tailbone in. Lifting up into the chest. Bring your arms out nice and wide in towards the chest and then step or jump your feet apart. Nice and wide. Turn your left toes in really steeply and then rotate on the right foot so that you can so the foot is pointing directly to the side and then pick up the back heel turn that back heel out all the way so that the hips can come level just have the feet so that the heels are in line with each other have your hands on your hips and then just work both legs evenly tightening the kneecaps lifting from the feet and up into the hips up into the chest and then hinge entirely at the hips and then reach down and find the blocks for your hands so Parjvottanasana so at this stage just be on fingertips with on the blocks just so that you've got length and then just observe where is that back leg hip is it higher up than the front leg hip or can you rotate that back leg front of the back leg inward so that the hip comes level with the front leg hip extend the chin and the chest forwards keeping the back straight just observe the action of the legs so this is often a very back leg orientated pose and we often forget about the action of the front leg, but keep that front leg straight, bend and um, draw the kneecap into the back of the knee. Project the chin and the chest forwards. If you can go down a little lower onto your blocks, then do again hinging entirely at the hips. If you can find the floor, then do, but without rounding the back, keep the back really straight. So going from this to this really extend in the spine forwards just breathing evenly hinging at the hips and see if you can just walk gently walk your hands towards the back leg keeping both legs working really evenly keeping the head lifted lifting the chest driving the chin towards the toes And then walk your hand forwards so they're in line with the foot again. Bend that front leg, step in with the back leg, get your blocks, and then come up into a standing position. And then just have the blocks on the left side. And then just come into Tadasana. So just be in Tadasana and just observe the action 
of the chest. Observe how the energy around the lumbar and around the seat bones has kind of come to life. Maybe it doesn't feel even on both sides quite yet. So we'll do the other side of the pose. Bring your arms out nice and wide into the chest and then step nice and wide. Turn the left toes, sorry, the right toes in and the left leg and foot all the way out. And then again, pick up that heel, that back foot and turn it out so that the hips Feel level. Does the front rim of the pelvis feel level? So before we do anything, just go back to the legs. Observe the action of the legs. Turn the legs inwards. Lift up into the chest. And then hinging entirely from the hips, keeping the back straight. And forward and then reach down to find the blocks. When you've got the blocks there, then just reset the legs, reset the hips, extend the spine away. Just breathe in evenly. If you can go down a little lower, then do. So just feel that the legs are working evenly. Don't forget the front leg. Keep that kneecap tight and keep the the thigh turning inwards, keeping the back thigh turning inwards so that the hips are level. If you can reach the floor, then do. Breathe in evenly and deeply. And then start to walk your hands towards the back leg. Keeping the chest lifted all the time, just be Cautious of coming forward too much, cat. Just nice and gentle. Okay, bring your hands forwards. Bend that front leg. Step in with the back leg, and then come back up into Tadasana. Just. Be in Tadasana and just observe how your energy has changed. Just listening to the breath. And then come down onto your front and onto the floor. Have the fingertips underneath your shoulders. Turn your toes under and then come up into, into dog down. So in a moment, we're going to go into dog up. So when we go into dog up, keep the legs straight. Keep the arms straight and lift and open the chest and the abdomen and the diaphragm region. It's so keeping the hands straight, keeping the keep, sorry, keeping the arms straight, keeping the legs straight, swing the hips forward and then come up into dog up, pushing into your heels, broadening the abdomen and the diaphragm and the collarbone, drawing the crease of the elbows to face the front, lifting the chin. Breathing evenly. And then without moving the hands or the feet, come back up into dog down. Just observe the even action of the legs and of the arms. Go back into dog down, dog up one more time. So just swing the hips forward, keep the arms straight, keep the legs straight, draw the crease of the elbows to face the front, and then lift up. 
push into the heels really consciously and then scoop the chest through the arms broadening at the abdomen the diaphragm keeping the legs straight and then just back into dog down And then come down onto your knees, just sit back on your heels, just lift up into the chest to take some deep inhalations, deep exhalations, just feeling the energy that you have brought into the physical body. That lightness of positive energy. And then hinging at the hips, come forwards into Adam Mukha Vivasana. Feeling that you can broaden and lengthen the lumbar spine by drawing the tailbone down towards the heels, by lengthening from the hips into the armpits. As you inhale, try to breathe into the back chest as well as the front chest. And then release your arms, just come into child's pose with the hands either side of the body extending into the arms like this if you feel that your weight becomes too heavy on your head Bring your hands underneath your shoulders and then sit yourself just back up onto your heels and then just feel that lightness of energy that comes from releasing from a forward bend. It's that lightness of energy in the head, around the chest, around the arms. and then just sit onto the floor and then stretch your legs out so just stretching your legs away so you might want to sit on a lift for this so um get to a folded blanket is often good for so we can do bad so just fold up your blanket and then sit on the blanket so even if you can normally sit directly on the floor sometimes it's nice to just give yourself just a little extra um, lift underneath the seat bones just make sure that you feel evenly positioned the buttock flesh feels even and then lift up into the chest have a couple of blocks where you can reach them in front of you and then get hold of the back of the knee and then draw the legs in draw the feet in towards the body so you come into Baddha Kanasana and then hold on to the big toes and then lift up into the chest push your heels really consciously together 
push the heels together and lift up into the chest. Now sometimes when you've got hold of the big toes, that's the kind of classical pose, but it can feel like you kind of close in the collarbone. So push the shoulder blades forwards towards the front chest. Draw the shoulder blades together so you can broaden the chest. But sometimes it's nice to just get hold of the shin so that your chest is broader. And then lift upwards up towards the ceiling. So we're going to come forwards in Baddhakanasana. So if you're avoiding forward bends today, then because of a back or any other condition, then just lift up into the chest. Just stay elevating the spine upwards. If you're coming forwards, get hold of the big toes again and then hinging entirely at the hips. Come forwards, keeping the back straight. Bend in the elbows so that you draw the elbows into the inner thighs and then encourage the inner thighs to draw out towards the knees. Coming forward, lift in the chest and then reach forwards and either find the blocks, that's, which gives you a little bit of extra height in the chest or you can find the floor. But using the blocks is, is a good way of doing it because it keeps the chest open. You just come forwards just a little bit at a time, hinging entirely at the hips. Just focus the forward bend on the hip girdle. Breathe evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. Keeping the jaw and the tongue and the throat soft, lifting the chest and then just creeping forwards just a little bit at a time. And then very gently just walk the legs back in. And then bring the legs just into swastikasana, just into cross legs. Just hold on to your knees. Just feel the broadness at the base of the lumbar. Just lift up into the chest, driving the chest upwards, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears. Just breathing evenly and then get your blocks and then bring them to the sides of the hips. Sukhasana, that side stretch. So once you're in position, reach underneath the right knee and then bring the right elbow down onto the floor because we're sitting on a lift. Maybe you'll need to put your block on the higher edge because we're sitting higher than we normally do. Have your hand on the hip, the right left hand on the hip, rotate the chest up to face the ceiling. Push the right elbow really firmly into the floor and then try and lengthen the left buttock bone away from that right elbow really consciously so that the right, the left buttock bone stays really firmly down. And then reach up and over, keeping that left buttock bone stretching away from the right elbow so that the hips feel level on the floor. Keep the arms straight, turn the chest. So we get that kind of Pajvakanasana stretch. Look underneath the armpit. Listening to the sound of the breath, working to draw that left buttock bone down into the floor. And then come back to the center. Just hold onto your knees for a moment. And just observe the energy. Around the trunk so on the left side feels enlivened maybe the right side doesn't feel quite so enlivened to start off with 
So just have to just bring your um, hand underneath the um, knee and then draw the elbow down into the floor. Push that elbow into the into the block or into the floor and then lengthen out into that right seat bone. Turn the chest up to face the ceiling. Turn the chest to face the ceiling and then reach up and over. Breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. And then come back to the center, lift up into the chest. Again, just feeling the evenness of the energy that you've released through those stretches. Just hold on to your knees, lift up into the chest, drive the chest upwards, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears. Take a deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the left side, drawing your abdomen across, your shoulders across. Using your out breath to turn a little more deeply. And then come back to the center lift up into the chest, driving the chest upwards. Take a deep inhalation in through the nose. And then turn to the left. come back to the center just come off your blanket and then you can go into setu banda if, if you're not doing setu banda today you can do supta badakanasana like this you can stretch your arms along the floor like that otherwise pull the knees towards your hip, your your seat bones and then lift the seat bones up away from the floor. Gather your shoulder blades together so you come really consciously up onto the tops of the shoulders and then place the brick into the tailbone region. Hold on to the sides of the mat. Turn the crease of the elbows up to face the ceiling. And then you can either stay with your knees bent or straight on one leg. Just see how that feels for your back. Bring it back, then straighten the other. And just feel how that feels for your back. And then just stretch your legs away, pushing the heels away, lifting up into the chest. Breathing evenly and deeply, listening to the sound of the breath.
feeling that the abdomen can broaden, the diaphragm region can broaden. Okay, when you're ready, just walk your feet back towards the blocks, the block, and then just very gently lift the tailbone up off the block, even if you have to come up onto the tiptoes to do it, and then move the brick out of the way, and then just adjust your shoulders as you guide yourself back down onto the floor and then draw your knees in towards your chest just really softening out the spine just moving your knees in towards your chest to work up your back moving your knees away from your chest to work down your back just find the sweet spot Clearly even out the action of the legs. And then roll onto your side and then sit yourself up. Just sit in cross legs for a moment. Just sit in cross legs. Hold onto your knees and then just lift up into the chest, just observe how your energy has changed. Maybe there is that feeling of lightness of energetic being. Okay, and then just open your eyes and then just come down onto your back. Just have a blanket from underneath your head. Just put something on or have a blanket if you feel like you might be a bit chilly. Some socks or whatever. And then just make sure you're in a really good straight line right down the centre of your mat. And then hold, and then bring your arms out to the sides of the body, palms facing upwards. And then let the legs release. Let the arms release. Unhook the muscles of the arms, unhook the leg muscles.
so that the physical body feels as though it becomes heavy on the floor. And then when you surrender the heaviness of the body into the floor, the energy of the body rises to the top of the skin. Still contained within the body by the skin, but rising up like helium. Just observe that energetic lightness that comes through our focused practice. Just observe any areas of tension and then release those areas of tension even more. Use the in-breath and the out-breath to distribute that feeling of lightness evenly throughout the body down into the tips of the toes, the tips of the fingers and into the top of the head. Asking in that feeling of energetic lightness. And then when you're ready, just gently wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers, and then Bend your knees, bring your knees in towards your chest. Just have a little rock in 
side to side from top to bottom just a gentle massage on the spine and then very gently roll over onto your right side stay down for a breath or two And then straighten out the top leg, come back up into a seated position, just a final cross legs with your hands in the musty, just a final spinal lift. Drawing the breath in through the nose, filling the lungs evenly on both sides. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just spend a moment to acknowledge the positive energy you've created inside. Drawing the breath into the abdomen. And acknowledging the positive energy. Allow some of that positive energy to radiate out into the world. Gently release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards. And as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. So hopefully you feel as though you have really lifted your energy and given yourself some good energy to put into your day. So thank you very much for joining me.